Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to um, our Greenwich RTC um, online workshop today, looking at everyone can create a photo. So it's really great that you can join us today. Um, here's a little bit of an outline of what we're going to be doing today. So we've got some welcomes and instructions. Uh, a little bit more about what everyone can create is we've got some tasks that we're going to have a go at doing um, during the workshop and then there's going to be some tasks that you can have a go at before joining the next session if that's what you would like to be doing. So a few welcomes before we go any further. So my name is Tim Lings and I'm Director of IT at Heronsgate Primary School and I'm joined by two of my colleagues who um, will now introduce themselves. We've got Ralph Corish. Hi there, yep, Ralph Corish. Um, uh, year five teacher here at Heronsgate, Apple teacher, and uh, just helping out Tim on all things computing here at Heronsgate. And we've also got a new member of our team, Andrew. So if you want to just quickly come off mute and say hi, Andrew. Yep, hi. Much of what Ralph said applies to me as well. My name is Andrew Barnshaw. I'm a year two teacher here at Heronsgate, Apple teacher, and I'm new to the team. Uh, yeah, looking forward to this. Brilliant, lovely. Right, well, onwards and upwards. So a little bit more about us. So uh, we are the Greenwich Apple Regional Training Centre based here at Heronsgate Primary School. If you're into the Twitter, then you can follow us there for um, timely updates, I'm sure. And this is just a bit about what Apple Regional Training Centres are. There's about 70 of them across the UK and Ireland. And we all aim to deliver courses to build the skills and confidence of educators to use Apple technology inside and outside the classroom. We are a community who share best practice and inspire excellence through teaching with Apple technology. Um, and if at any point you've got a question, um, do pop it in the chat. Fantastic. Hello, Shanazan. I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name from Malaysia. Wow, a global audience indeed. Uh, so we're based in Greenwich, the, in lowly London. Um, there we go. So everyone can create. Now, this is a set of curriculum resources that Apple have created, put together with a bunch of educators and uh, professional creatives with the idea that, that you can teach people how to express themselves using the creative arts and that could be woven into your curriculum. So we've got a series of five workshops here um, and the, we're going to be exploring each of these Everyone Can Create resources and the point of them is to enrich your creative skills with iPad in the context of teaching and learning and then make some suggestions of how you can integrate that into your curriculum with the guides that are we're going to basically work our way through <laughs> and the idea behind this apple's kind of big idea is that they think that everyone should have the opportunity to learn skills across different creative mediums to become the next generators of innovators artists and creators so maybe that might not be you or it might not be all of your kids but it might be some of them and it's just giving them the opportunity to to develop in those skills so the resources that they have made, they span four different uh, creative disciplines. Today we're looking at photography, photo. They've got drawing, which might involve um, an Apple Pencil or, or not, music, video, and then they've got an accompanying teacher guide, which suggests how you could integrate that into your curriculum. And then a teacher guide for early years, which is basically the same idea, but with ideas that are very much focused on foundation stage early years, the um, under fives kind of age bracket possibly up to seven would also work fine, but just aimed at younger learners. So the photos uh, curriculum resource is looking at how you can use photography to uh, inspire creativity in your classroom, how to tell stories to capture those moments and to illustrate concepts. So it's taking your photographic skills further in drawing, either using your finger, an Apple pencil, maybe a Logitech crane or some other stylus. To, um, to represent, to let that inner artist come out, to develop observational skills, um, doodling skills, visualizing ideas, expressing yourself. Video makes use of iMovie and clips, two of Apple's apps that are very good at making videos really easily. And again, it's how to do that storytelling, how to perhaps make a documentary, to make it an instructional video, and just developing those skills that then can be used across the curriculum in different ways. And then music, making use of GarageBand, which can be quite an intimidating app to a lot of people, but actually once you get your head around how it works, lots of opportunities there, how to make use of music and audio and sound as part of your curriculum. So again, looking at those teacher guides, 
So they refer to the content of the books. So here they're looking at making photos into a telling a story. And then there's suggestions of how they could be integrated into, for example, here, science or coding with some really interesting ideas. Um, or again, science and coding, but there's also English and maths. So here's examples of the early, uh, early learner guides. So that's an activity from the, the book. And then here's some suggestions of how that could be integrated with um, early learners. So we'll have a look a bit at that later on. And all of this is, is offering ways to, um, is Apple have designed projects that can be part of the three parts of the creative process. So that's how to come up with ideas, how to make something, how to communicate, which helps with engagement. So because students are hopefully learning in a deeper way that helps with their engagement, which then allows teachers to bring the arts into the curriculum more and more through this creative process. So that's the idea that they're going for. Now, hopefully you should have received a link to a pages document, a little workbook that you can use to accompany the, these different sessions. So there's gonna be five sessions where we look at these different, um, different resources and you can upload onto that the different activities that we do. And it's just a chance for you to keep a note of what's going on, what have you learned, how could you apply it in the classroom. And we'd also like to share together um, different things that we create. And we thought that we would use Shobi as a means of doing this. Now we use Shobi at our school as a, basically the backbone of our digital workflow that all the students work ends up there, but they have a nice little feature called groups, which allow uh, teachers and in fact, students and parents to be in one place um, and share resources. So we thought this might be quite useful. So I am going to, in a sec, just open up the chat here and I'm going to paste in this link. So if you um, have Shobi already on your iPad, you can just follow this link. Hopefully that turns up as a link. No, it doesn't. Maybe if I put... Let's try that. Aha, that's now a link. If you click on that, you can, if you've already got it all set up, it will do that. But if you haven't, it will offer you to create a Shobi account. So you don't even need to have the Shobi app installed on an iPad. You can just use the web version. And then when you're part of that, you can then join a group. So I'm just gonna have a look here. I've got Shobi and here we've got our little group here. Um, welcome to our first session. So if you have managed to join, please do just pop a little hi message in there. Let's see if anyone is going to join us, if this is going to work at any level. Let's have a look. Four members, that's just us, fine. So again, that link. Oh, Mr. Corris is saying hi. So if you click on the link in the chat on Zoom, it will then take you out to a web browser, make an account. If you don't already have a Shobi account, maybe you've never used Shobi in your life, not a problem. Make a teacher account, it will be free, and then you'll be able to join in this little space that we'll be able to share with. And it is a very good it is a very good tool for um for the children showing their learning as well um, a very good way for the children to show their digital learning um, as a, a sort of a very good hub so that you can as a teacher check how their learning is going you can separate them up into folders for different subjects and um, for each different assignment so it is a very very good way of if your children are starting to use ipads or do some digital learning and it's a really good way of the teachers checking how that is going. I'm just wondering if anyone's managed to make that work. Um, oh, we've got Mrs. Ingram has joined us. Fantastic. So if you want to just po post a message and we can all um, know that you're able to join us. So let me give you a few more minutes to see if we can get it. Heads around that. So that will stay in the chat for you yeah. to carry on with that. Yeah, that link that link will stay in the chat. So if you're just doing it slow time but watching as well, then uh, um, then well 
then that's it's fine. Gonna... Over the next over the next half an hour, um, it will be uh, it will stay there. So um, so you can do it slow time as well. Brilliant. Okay, so something for you to reflect on, and I thought we could have a go at posting our thoughts about this into show B is what does creativity look like in your classroom? So it could be that um, it doesn't look like much, there's not a lot of creativity going on, or there's lots going on, and there's, you're already making use of different creative mediums in your classroom. It will be just very interesting to find out. And then we can perhaps invite a couple of people to come off mute if they're happy and just share their thoughts a bit further. So in that show beat group, I'm just gonna literally write that question. What does, he says as he now can't see what the question was. One second. What does creativity look like in your classroom? If you can't work, Shobi, then feel free just to put it in the chat as well. Um, in in uh, in Zoom. Maybe Mr. Corish or Mr. Barnshaw, if you have any thoughts you want to share. Yeah, I was just typing it out, but um, but I'll, I can just um, verbally share as we're going along. I think creativity in my class today, were, we had a really creative day, actually. We were um, we did a science lesson where we were uh, making parachutes and uh, and uh, and dropping them down. And they were recording it in a really nice way, sort of um, they were recording it using um, on um, using the video, using slow mo to see um, whether how effective the parachute was. Um, and then they were recording some of their learning on iMovie. And we also created an advert in English today for a theme park that was in the book. Um, and we did that using iMovie as well. So um, sort of finding different, different wa ways to explore how to sort of express themselves and express their learning. And often the good thing is as well, it's about giving them the choice. I work in year five, so they are, they're sort of, they're quite old for primary school now. So they have, they work better when you give them um, and obviously a little bit of structure, but a, quite a, a varied choice as to how they want to display their learning. And so I got all sorts of wonderful, wonderful videos for adverts and all sorts of wonderful ways of showing off their science learning today with their, with their um, parachutes. So it's been a really good creative day, actually. Lovely. Uh, Mr. Barnshaw, to put you on the spot, any thoughts? Yeah, so uh, we also had science this afternoon as well, and um, we've been exploring materials and so today's lesson I cleared out all the tables it's back now as it was it usually is but cleared out the tables had a big space in the middle of the room and put huge circles using skipping ropes to make a big Venn diagram and one side would have hard the other side soft and we would change that around and um, each child had a different material they'd come up put it where they wanted to put it and then once all the children had a go out there I would take a picture from, from above and I was able to post it to all of their showbi so they all had the same picture and then they could locate their material and add a voice note explaining why they put it there and to describe it a little bit and we did, we changed the Venn diagram a couple of times they uh, use different materials so it was quite quite a free lesson very open space um, but they all had the same image because I was taking the picture but they was able to use their individual iPads to add voice notes and justify why they put that material in that part of the Venn diagram. Lovely, thank you. Okay, well, feel free to share your thoughts as we, as we go through. Okay, so we're gonna begin now looking at the Photos app and how, well, how the, this book with some resources about photography, we can help increase your creativity. So you will need the Photos app on your iPad and the photos, no, the camera app and the photos app. That's what we're gonna be using. And we're, we're gonna be looking at how photos of everyday objects can be enhanced with characteristics to compel, tell compelling imaginative stories. So first of all, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of the resource that everyone can create photo. So this can be found on Apple Books, which is the orange app that looks like a book. And here, as well as Oprah Winfrey's book club I've got <laughs> various different books here so here we go everyone can create photo and i'm again right at the beginning so i'm just going to pinch out and i can change my way through the different chapters and we're going to start right at the beginning let's start on the introduction so it just tells us a little bit about creativity how important it is and what they've done and then we're starting to look at photos so this is 
which is the basics of how to take photos. So how photos have the power to communicate ideas, evoke feelings and take us to faraway places. And it's about how you can take good photos. So some suggestions of what you might need. So the first activity is to do everyday objects and how you can take photos of everyday things and they can come alive in new ways. So the first thing is it suggests to take a photo of something similar. So I've got a nice little mug here. I'm gonna take a picture of in a second. So first of all, choose your subject, a small and interesting object that you can move around easily, then find a neutral background. So that will help focus the viewer's attention. Then you're gonna take that photo. So you open the camera, hold the iPad firmly. So you want it to frame the object nicely. So you might perhaps wanna zoom in if it's a bit too far away or move back if it's a bit blurry and then you just take that photo and it's suggesting here that photos the live photos option is turned off so let's just have a go so on my ipad here i'm going to open up the photos app and here is oh allow while using app why not so here is my lovely mug. when it rains look for rain so um i could perhaps position it a bit higher here we go let's just take a nice picture of a mug and I'm going to turn off so at the top here you can see I have actually got live photos on so what that does is it records a little bit of video at the beginning and end of the photo so it little moves a little bit which is quite fun for um, taking family photos but when you're doing this it's going to get in the way so we can turn that off here we go live photos so I'm just going to press it press that shutter take a picture not very special at the moment but that's fine now we can experiment with different angles. So we could shoot overhead, we could get super low, rotate the iPad so the camera lens is close to the ground, or get super close and fill the frame. And you can also adjust the focus and exposure. So you can tap the subject on the screen to focus, and then you can drag your finger up and down to brighten and darken. So that's what they're suggesting we do here. And you can make this photo a bit more interesting. Okay, so let's have a try at that. So, um, First of all, let's get it to focus properly. So I'm gonna go a bit closer. In fact, I'm gonna do both these things. I'm gonna turn it upside down. Here we go. There we go. That already looks a bit more interesting. When it rains, look for rainbows. And it keeps on trying to focus. But if I tap, I can choose where I focus. And if I tap and hold, it then locks that focus. So it's not, even if I wobble slightly, it's not gonna keep on refocusing. So I could take, a nice photo there. Maybe I'm going to do a nice top down photo. So you got that, you got that, that focus lock just by hold, tapping and holding it down. Yeah, I press and hold and then it just locks it. And then I might want to make it lighter or bright, darker so I can drag it up or drag it down. So when it darkens, when it's dark, look for the stars. That's quite nice. And that already starts to look a bit like what's going on there. Um, lovely. Maybe a Really, oh, it's, see, I, oh, I can just tap again and it will, a really weird, like, macro shot. Here we go. Just the handle, what's going on here? Yeah. Now, slightly pushing the limits of these humble iPads. So if you, as you spend more money, you can get a, kind of improve your camera. But again, you, there's a lot you can do. So there we go, a few interesting photos. Slightly interesting. I'm not, you know, pretending they're going to win any Pulitzer Prizes or whatever they do for photography. Um, change location, experiment with light sources and take more photos. Look for details and patterns that reveal themselves in different light. So maybe outside, I won't be going outside, but I might open the blind. Um, outside in the shade, direct light source, indoors even un under even lighting. And then we're going to review our photos. So let's get back to the camera. Uh, just, uh, just Tim, I think what could be a good idea is if we all take a picture, we'll have our photo and then duplicate it so we can compare the original with our edited photo. Yeah, we're just going to take a few more and then we can have a try at that. So Sounds good. let's try some more interesting light. So I've got the sun here. Here we go. And that already looks something really <laughs> magical. I think I could definitely put that on Instagram. Look at that. Um, and there's a bit more sparkly there. So you're going to be getting a bit of the sun coming through. Oh, that would look much better when it was a bit closer. So we're already just taking a bit of... I'm not sure I'm ever going to be able to look at that mug in the same way again. There we go. 
that's just a few ideas. So again, when I'm done, if I press the home button, I go to the Photos app, which I'm going to put in my dock here. And then I can see my lovely range of photos. That's all right. Nothing special. Um, uh, someone's proposed in the chat that can they get this the book? Okay, let me just uh, do that for you in a sec. But um, maybe when Ralph is sharing his part, I will send the link to the book. So that's not my favorite. That's getting a bit better. Quite like that. I'm gonna tap the heart so I can find these photos again. And then that, I think that one is my favorite. Look at that. The one, inside, the one inside the mug is the best one. I think so. And it's dark look for the stars. Okay, good. Um, and then there you go. I've reviewed my photos. Lovely. So this is now your opportunity to have a go. So um, I'm going to send out a link to the book at this point but if you just want to try out some of those things on an ipad and then um, if you're happy you could post them back into Shobi so that we can all see them so you have got three minutes if you need any help please do let us yeah, know so, it's so just going to have a play um zoom if you leave zoom on if you just press the home button and do your thing zoom call will carry on you don't need to leave the zoom call to do this okay so um, we, i'm going to snuff my camera but if you need any help, let us know. So you've got three minutes to try out some of these things with your eye. Let's see what you can take, Andrew. Sounds like that sounds like a competition. I've already gone out exploring so this afternoon. Oh, so you okay? I've got two and a half minutes, right? Yeah. Cool. For our second part, so we've taken our photos now. Um, we've uh, a few people have some photos into Shobi and um, we're just going to look at the practicalities now of tweaking editing and adjusting those photos so um, and how that can um, um, enhance the creativity of what we have taken um, I, um, I have to admit uh, Mr Barnshaw I think you've, you've done pretty well there um, Mr Nings I don't know if you want to quickly show on Shobi just to see the images that have uh, been taken but Mr Barnshaw clearly showing that he has creativity at a very short notice um, uh, yeah. on, <laughs> on on Shobi um, you might want to refresh it um, because I think uh, here we go so we've got Mr Courage's and then at the top here so uh, sometimes look at this Teddy's adventure um, there is definitely a year one and two teacher head of the year five teacher there um, <laughs> um, and actually, though, funny enough, like I've um, I've definitely seen teachers do that, and um, how you're taking photos of um, objects around the school. Actually, what, one of the things that I'm about to do with the editing uh, function is uh, is something that I've already done with a class before. Um, so, yeah, it's um, we're going to have a look at just I'm going to screen share and. Um, an iPad, we're going to go through the functionalities of actually just tweaking and editing the photos and what you can do once you've taken the photo to enhance it a little bit. Um, and then um, we'll see how I uh, think maybe some ideas of how we can perhaps use that while we are teaching. Um, so just need to share my screen a second. And then hopefully yes, so I am on my albums here. There's just a few I took um, a few I took in those um, three minutes and a couple I took before the start of the meeting um, there. So um, I'll just take this one, for example, um, having a look here. And this is a picture of our wonderful flooring. And it probably looks like every single floor at every single school going. Um, and you've got here the parquet flooring. Now, I was thinking I took this and then I was looking at it. I was like, well, it's it's not very straight. So I kind of wanted to think about those things. So if I press the edit there, I'll just press cancel again and edit at the top, um, at the top up there, it says edit. If we press that, it gives us all sorts of different tools that we can do to enhance our photo, to tweak it, to change it. And the first thing you can do, like a little magic button is the auto button, which instantly changes it around to, and makes it how it thinks the photo should look. Basically, it gives it the lighting, the exposure, the saturation that it believes um, work for this photo. And quite rightly, having done that, actually, 
if I um, if I unpress it again and it removes it, actually this is far more what like the, the wood looks like. Um, if I hold if I tap on my photo, then it goes to the original just for a couple of seconds, and you can see there that. Um, if I just tap on it again, it holds it to original for a couple of seconds. You think, have I done it right? Have I done it right? Yeah, that's fine. Now on the left, you can see um, there is what looks like sort of a, a dial, um, which is what we're on at the moment and is linked to all of the different exposures and brilliance and highlights and set shadows and all of those things, which I'm not going to focus on too much because I'm going to let it do the job for me for the auto here. But should I fancy to change the, um, change the settings on it, to vivid maybe, or to you can play around with them. I quite like dramatic warms. I actually might just keep that one on there. And then the last one that looks like um, the, the cutting tool gives the opportunity to do a few bits and bobs with it as well. Straighten it up. Now, if we go up and down here, you can see actually it's not very straight. I actually might want it a bit straighter. I'm gonna try and capture them. So actually it's going nice and straight up my screen. That looks nice and straight. So actually now I've got it as though I was looking straight downwards. And on these tools here, you can, you can go top heavy or bottom heavy. I'm gonna go back to zero because I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just gonna press done now on that. And that is that edited, that is that saved. Now I'm just gonna go back to another photo, which I took quite a couple of years ago now with, with my, one of my class. We created a character called Horace in our English lessons. We were reading a book about an octopus and we named him Horace. Um, and what we did as a class, because the book was sort of about Horace's adventures, and we went around the school and we basically created Horace's adventures around the place by taking photos and sort of putting Horace in. And as you can see, oh, wrong one, sorry. Um, as you can see there, this is, this is down one of the corridors of our schools. And um, I was, that was late one evening when I was sort of showing the children what I wanted them to do. Um, and I was sort of saying like, about how Horace broke in one night into the school and, um, and started wandering around and the, the uh, premises team were hunting him high and low and couldn't find him, but I managed to get capture a picture. And I was using that and we used that a bit in our writing later on down the line about all the different adventures Horace had. And so all I used for that was an Apple pencil um, to edit it. So, um, the iPad I'm using at the moment, I can't actually use an Apple Pencil on, um, but um, what you could do, I was just thinking, I quite like this one, which I took earlier on. Okay, I quite like this one. And I was thinking what I could do if I did have the time, if, if I press edit again up there, then you've got the three dots up at the top, the three dots. And those three dots, one of the options is markup. And that is where I used this tool to create Horace in the school, but then I was also thinking you could, if, if I wanted to do the same thing again, I could do it here. Um, and so you can use your pencil for all this marking up. Um, so if I was to perhaps try and quickly recreate Horace, I won't spend long doing him because I don't have a pencil and my finger is not the most creative of tools, but um, um, I'm gonna just quickly go there and Horace can maybe Maybe Horace is just coming out. That's my phase leader's room coming out of there. So uh, um, um, I might uh, I might quickly show Horace trying to uh, trying to get into get into her room there, trying to escape. Slightly darker one there. So I'm just going to give him some eyes. Give him some eyes. Okay. Very very quick. If I was doing this, if I was doing this um, for the children, I'd spend some time doing it and make it make it look a lot lot nicer. Um, but then. So Horace is having an adventure around the school um, and, and exploring around. So that's how you can perhaps make it creative for the children by getting them to take photos and they can install characters into their photos. They can, they can create their own characters. They can base it on a book. What would the character in the book be doing if he snuck into the school and was exploring around? Where would he go? Go and take a photo, go and uh, add him onto, onto your photo by using the markup tools and your Logitech crayons. And, or, your, or your Apple pencils, or even just your fingers, and just sort of show a bit of creativity. And can you, can you then um, sort of create this character roaming around the school halls? So just a, one little idea there of how you could sort of use that in, in a teaching idea. So I've just saved it there. And again, if I press done, then um, it is now saved. And I might 
think about sending that to show me to them perhaps saying or just show it putting it on my slides going oh, look Horace has found another part of the school that he's explored what characters have you got that's sort of exploring around the school and so yeah that's how we can take the photo we can one other thing that we can do which I haven't just quickly done and if I just quickly uh, go on my clock photo you can tell what time I took that one um, and then we go edit going back to the the one that looks like the crop um, and then you can see here actually the if you can sort of zoom in and just all I wanted there maybe was the clock I didn't want to show the wall around it I wanted to focus in on the clock and then zoom in just make the clock the center of my piece there and then so I can zoom in and that is now if I press done it will crop out the original however should you think you've made a mistake press edit and at the top there there is a revert no I didn't want to do that actually I thought it looked better before before revert back to original and you can you can go again it doesn't lose your original photo so i'm going to stop my sharing now um and if mr lings can go uh, get the timer ready and we're going to have another three minutes maybe those photos that you took the first time maybe you can have a little play around with the things that i've just shown maybe with the markup tools just um, maybe using the the magic paint magic brush to sort of enhance the photos zoom in straighten see what you can do to your to your photos to try and make them look more creative try and focus in on a particular area so three minutes i believe mr lings is that right yeah if you have the book we're just looking at activity three so how you can enhance straighten rotate or crop or add a doodle so that's what we're doing so yeah let me Lovely. So I can see that Mr. Corish has shared um, some of his pictures to our little Shobi group here. Let's have a little look. So there he is um, reading a book with what's the name of your the what octopus? Horace. Horace. Horace the octopus. Also reading some Harry Potter. Lovely. Okay. So why does this matter? Why does using photos and a bit of markup? How does that really help in the classroom? So. Taking photos of everyday objects helps students develop observational skills and find beauty and details around them. The um, seeing is actually, and observing is really important, and it, it's important to develop those skills to kind of really pay attention to the world around them. Uh, personifying everyday objects offers students the opportunity to see things differently and think about the way they use photography to tell creative stories. So I know that some of those photos, like if you just added a little character in there, it suddenly, lots of ideas come to life and start kind of sparking off and building a collection of themed images helps students develop classification and categorization skills good so if you are interested we would um, invite you to during the next few weeks we've got our next session is in um october i believe where we're going to be looking at the drawing guide but there'll be a chance at the start for anyone who is on this workshop that would like to join the next one to share perhaps things they've tried so this is from chapter five of the everyone can create guide to explore using this resource and share examples of your creation next time i should have edited that so maybe um we will also have a go at that so we've got something to share as well yep. so i'm just going to show you that so this again is only everyone can create photo book on page 37 so i'm just going to pitch out and let's see if i can find page 37 so it's um, collage composition so the idea of this activity is it's that there's ways that you can combine together photos text and other graphical elements to tell a new story so one idea is to do like a photo hunt for images of letters in a name so this person's having a little look and has managed to find all these letters by just going around their built environment seeing what they can take photos of and then they're using Keynote to make uh, a little a, a new slide. And then you can insert the images there to um, arrange your photos on a blank canvas so you can actually spell something out. So that's just, again, it's getting kids to really look at their built environment and develop those creative skills. And then you can add some doodling and things like that. So there's a suggestion here of a rebus puzzle, which is puzzle with words that are represented by combinations of pictures and individual letters. So that could be quite nice. There's another activity about rotating, masking and remixing. So you can have a photo in Keynote, 
you can mask it. And then if you add multiple photos, you can mask them and then rotate them and basically kind of crop out a part of the image and add it over the top and then add borders, perhaps some short phrases. And again, it's trying to tell something about what the photo is about with adding other photos on top. And then here's a suggestion how you can add shapes over the top of items. And you can in fact cut out the backgrounds of items, items with a solid background using instant alpha. And then you can combine them all together to create interesting pictures here. So the shark's about to attack this poor fellow jumping off. And here's a suggested activity, a project at the end is to create a personalized college, collage, not college, personalized collage using some of these different skills. So um, photo of photography and combining them with different images and shapes and 3D effects. So it, there's just lots of creative opportunities there to just tell something about an individual. So that is just a little challenge, should you wish to accept it. And we'll post all this in an email as well. So here, I'm just gonna go through some suggestions in the Everyone Can Create Teacher Guide. So here they're suggesting in maths with word problems, that you could photograph objects to illustrate a word problem. So again, it's applying that in a different subject. You could in literacy, you suggesting personification, practice fictional writing skills by creating a story that personifies an object. That's what we've been doing already, but it's taking that further with the literacy. Um, history and social studies, demonstrate the impact of change over time using photography. So that just, again, using, photogra using photography to explore um, change over time, using markup to highlight significant changes. So there's all these different ideas that are really interesting to explore. Um, oh, in science, going up close, document details of rocks, plants, or insects with photography, get in close and take photos, then use markup to identify and label key characteristics. And there's also an example there about coding. Um, oh, let's go back here. And there's also the early learners teacher guide, which I'm just gonna show you. So page is 113. So there we go. So I'm going to open up this early learners guide. And I'm on the right page. Look at this. So here are some suggestions um, again for that photo hunt kind of idea. So choose a two dimensional shape, like a square or a circle, and then literally go and photo photograph that around the environment. That is really useful for getting kids to learn what the shapes are by looking for them around. And then with a photo, it really helps them helps you as a teacher see what they're looking at. Maybe capturing emotion. So it's it's good for kind of um, developing that uh, empathy with characters, trying to figure out what different characters are feeling and so on. Maybe there's something here about, again, a scientific close-up. So revealing those tiny details, it helps kids really, really look at plants or animals or whatever else is in their environment. Um, right, so I am going to, so with these books, you do have to have it on an iPad or a Mac to access them, and you will need an Apple ID in order to buy them, even though they are free, but you need that, that link to actually add it to your device. So if you're in a school where, that, where um, you have managed Apple IDs, you just need to speak to IT and they will be able to help you with that. So you can, if you're using the workbook, um, add an image of what you've done. And then if you want to, you can share it to our shared space with Shobi. But that's basically all we're looking at today. So next time in October, we're gonna be looking at drawing and we'll have an opportunity at the start to share any examples or reflections on activities that you may have done. So uh, thank you for your time. Hopefully that was useful. I was wondering if anyone's got any questions at this point, either you can pop them in the chat or you can come off mute and just ask away. Um, or if not, it's been great to have you with us and we hope to see you at our next session. So yeah, we'll make sure that we send through uh, links to the books in, in an email. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you guys. Thank you.